back it feels like okay <laughs> so welcome it is Sunday afternoon and I'm going to show you how to thread your sewing machine I've got my industrial mama here it's called a net you get different ones but basically with industrial sewing machines they're all kind of the same and um, what I like about this one it's got quite a long distance here I do not use it for sewing on fab on clothes I use it for blinds for curtains upholstery you can use them for your normal sewing things but then you have to change this little walk not walking foot um the feed dog so now it's got quite a rough feed dog in there but if I want to do normal fabric materials for clothes then I need to change that feed dog completely to a new one um, and I don't want to bother with that. What I like, this sewing machine, my Bernina 1008, it's completely metal on the inside, so it's semi-industrial, so it works really well with most fabrics. I do not use it for too thick fabrics. I can do denim there. Oh, I broke my needle. When did that happen? That's strange. Um, so I do not use it for too thick fabrics, I'll change the needle just now, but I do like to use it for clothes. So this is my industrial sewing machine. Let's start with this one, I'll go and get a needle for that one just now. The first thing with the industrial sewing machine, which is really cool, is this. Let's open it up. It runs in oil. So this whole mechanism on the inside, it's very simple and plain. And you have this cord that actually pulls the oil into all the moving parts. You need to do that because it is so heavy duty. I mean, when I do curtains, you look at meters and meters of fabric that it literally pulls through without any problems. I have to keep this oil filled up. And when I, because you can actually let your machine burn out if you do not do that. And then here you can just see it's very simple and I just make sure that I always have enough oil. Okay. <sighs> then this is if you want to go back and forward with this mechanism. If I want to lift my foot, I can do it back here. You have a mechanism there and you use your knee and that lifts the foot for you. And it actually works very well. Another thing, this is for zigzag, no, this is for stitch length. This machine is a straight stitcher. It does not have zigzag. So that's your stitch length. And then for your tension, you work over here and you will work on your bobbin. Let me show you how to take out the bobbin. I'm actually going to take this plate out completely because then you can see in there. The bobbin is in there can you see it the bobbin is in there so when you take it out there's your bobbin if you want to change this the, the tension you know when you sew sometimes your tension goes out you can either tighten or loosen that screw that screw is for the tension the tighter this plate is the the tighter is your tension on the bobbin for the top tension I use this one so you can just move it and you have to play because there's no numbers. So you, you move it until it gives you the right tension. I'm not going to bother with my, I'm not going to mess with my tens tension because these machines are very plain and simple, but their tension sometimes is a problem. When you put the bobbin back, you have your bobbin like this. So first let, let me show you how to, sorry, I'm going to work here where it's easier to see. So when you, oh, just knotted my cotton. One of the things that I do to work meters and meters of fabric at a time, uh, I do because I do upholstery and stuff. I actually want my bobbins hand and then I have them ready for the project because there's nothing I hate more than to wind bobbins. You wind the bobbin while you are sewing over there. So the bobbin goes on there and that's why I have an extra cotton up there. I will thread it through there, down, into that little holder, or that hole, through the tension wheel over there, wind around the bobbin, and then push this up, and this will wind up 
while I'm sewing. It's not like a normal sewing machine where you have to do the bobbin separate. You can do it while you're sewing. And then every time when it's full, it makes a massive noise to tell you it's done. It actually just springs open and then it stops winding. So here's your bobbin. Your bobbin goes anti-clockwise. Needs to go that way. Now I have a friend who sometimes works with me and she often puts this bobbin in the wrong way. And then it makes a big mess at the bottom. Like all the cotton just bunching up on the, on the bottom. So often when you have cut, cotton bunching up at the bottom, it's because your bobbin is the wrong way. So there's my bobbin. And here is my bobbin case holder. So now you put your bobbin in. Oh, sorry, I've got it the wrong way. Needs to go that way. Like that. Okay. So if your bobbin is like this, it needs to go that way. And then... There's your bobbin case holder. It goes in through that loop, through that, and your bobbin is going. So remember, there's your bobbin, and your bobbin, your bo oh, there's your bobbin case holder, and that's your bobbin. It goes that way. You go in through there. Hook it until it's there, and you can see how it's moving. That's your bobbin. Little. Okay, so I see my internet connection isn't great, um, but it's just one of those things. If you see here, there's a little hook there, so we're going to push it in until you hear the click there. So it's in. Now, threading your sewing machine. Oh, let's put this plate back. Oh, no, I'm not going to put the plate back. We'll do it afterwards. We'll just leave it open. I don't want to use that one. We're going to use this. So to thread your sewing machine, you go up there, through this hole. Okay. You go down. Down through that hole. There's a tension wheel. You go through the tension wheel. Then you go down and through. And then you hook it through this one. And then you go through your tension wheel again. And you go all the way until you get here. Then you hook it like that. So it pulls that one. Okay. Then you go around that one. Always make sure that that wheel is at the top. If you want to turn that wheel, you have to put your foot on the pedal at the bottom. It won't turn by its own. So I just put my foot down a little bit. And I move it up, you go through that hole there, hook around there, hook around there, bring your needle up, and through that hole. Now, your needle, you see it's got a little dent in there, and then a thick part, and that part is flat. This is a round needle. Always make sure your opening is to the side and the thick part is to this side. If you want to thread your needle, wet the needle. It makes like a magnetic field and you can pull your cotton through. Your needle is thread. Now, let's switch it on. Let's it switch it on here. And you can hear the sound. Just on that, I just want to switch material. Don't focus on me. Material. Yeah. So show that while I'm working. So we have our cotton down, and when you start, I lift the knee, the foot with my knee. Put my cotton down, oh my 
material and you can start sewing. I'm going to show that as well. Your oil basin again. And there you go. We have just sewn on the fabric. That's the right side of the green and there you can see the wrong side. Now I didn't hold it properly when I started so it bunched up a little bit but then it started sewing straight and all is fine. And then when I'm done I just break it off. So that's your industrial sewing machine. Now we're going to move over to the um, home sewing machine. If we just put this plate back. One, two, three. Oh, this thing is so heavy. And just hook it in. Okay, you have an extra hand there. Okay. Uh, there we go. Oh. Okay. Oops. Oh, not quite. <laughs> it's cute. Ah, it's in. Okay, that's my industrial sewing machine. Now let's move over to this one. So we're going to plug it in. Okay. This is a Bermina 1008. I love it. Like I said, it's semi-industrial. And let me just fetch a needle for it. So the industrial sewing machine uses the round shank needle and this one uses a flat one. You can see there that side's flat, that side's round and it's quite easy. It fit, doesn't fit if you put it the wrong way around so the flat goes to the back. Fortunately I blew this light and I can only find them in a and I have to work with the darkness there. So I've got a needle in there. Now let me find some cotton. Here's my cotton. So when I use a bit cone, I just put them down on the table behind it. Can you come this way? Now with this machine, what I like, it's got that little loop there. And I like to put my cotton through there, then through here, going through my tension wheel up here. What's nice about this is you can move your tension tighter or looser. So somebody asked me how to have a video for that. Um, I will show you how to do this, but sharing elastic is just something you have to figure out for yourself. If I do a dress with sharing elastic, then I'll show it, but I'm not over here. So we've gone, let me just start again. You go through there at the back. Then you go through there. You go to the front, down here, up, through there, there's a little bar, go through that bar, and then hook it around that, and then you go, wet your needle, go through your needle. Oh, make sure your cotton is cut properly and go through your needle. Oops. There we go, it's through. And then if you want to get your cotton to come out from the bottom, just move your needle down and go up again. And there, I just use whatever I have to pull it through properly. Oh, it's hooked there. There we go, it's through. And that is how you thread your sewing machine, or the normal one. And let's sew quickly. Like I said, the lights unfortunately just blew yesterday and I need to go to a special place. It's quite far away and I don't, to get my lights replaced and I don't have time now to do it. All oh, that also closed. But there you can see. And also what is different between this, the industrial and this machine, this one I can do zigzag, there's all the stitches that I can do on this one. 
Um, there's some embroidery stitches on that side. If I want to do the red, then I have to make sure that that stripe is on the red side. I usually over there that stripe. I usually work with the green stitches, and then it's on the green side there. And so there's the green stitches, all of them, and there's the red stitches, and those little charts tells you how to do it. So, but every machine is different, so I'm not going to go into that now. And there you go. And you can see how it shows over there. I am also going to show you quickly how to clean this machine. It's very important to keep your machines clean. Remember, you are working a lot on your machine, even if it doesn't feel like it. But with every garment, you are looking at kilometers of fabric that you are pushing through your machine. So let's just show you the bobbin first. Your bobbin goes that way. Like that. Then there's your bobbin. And it goes in, through there, and there it goes. And then when you put it in there, can you see there's a little... Um, there's a little hook there, up there, and so we're going to make sure that that goes into that little hook. Hear the click? If you hear the click, you know your bobbin is in its place. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take the bobbin out because we're going to clean this machine now. So the first thing you do is you open that, then you can take this out and just done quite a big job over here so I thought it would be good here but it's not too dirty so we're just going to take all of that dust out I also like old makeup brushes because I find that they get out the dust quite well and then I use this side and you can also use like a pipe cleaner to go in there and just wiggle it in there to get all the extra dust out. You don't want your machine to be dirty because it will affect the way it runs to make it very noisy but it can also um, make it not work properly. Okay, so it's clean. Now to oil. People go and they put oil everywhere. Please don't do it because if the machine is not moving where you've put oil, that oil gets sticky and it can actually make your machine not work properly. So the first place for this machine where I need oil is in there, on that bar there. Can you see? Over there. So I am just going to drop a drop of oil in there. Actually, just one drop. There we go. Put another one. Okay. And then the neck of oil is going to be down here. Just there. Okay. And then you just move it. Let it work because it's going to pull all the oil through. And then sometimes if it starts squeaking in here, there's a bar that lifts this needle up and down. And you can't, I don't know if don't think you can see it because the light's not there. So what I would do is I would put a drop of oil on a earbud and then I would just hold the earbud against the bar inside there and let it just go against it but you can also put a little bit of oil when the needle is down just there because that will also pull some of the oil up on the bar you can hear immediately it's much more silent than it was before okay now we're going to put everything back in their places lift your needle oh I see there's still some dust let's just clean this properly Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to put my plate back. This plate hooks in from the back and then it just clicks in there. But some plates have like um, nuts and bolts or screws that's holding them. So now with this one, it needs to fit in there. You will see there's like a place for this part to fit and then up there. And then I hold it with, I put my finger through this and hold it there. Not, don't push too hard because then it pushes out of its position and then click that back in. 
Okay, yep, that's in the right position. And I can put my bobbin back in. And there we go. So that's it. There's the two sewing machines. That's how you thread it. Let's just quickly do the bobbin for this one. If you want to wind up this bobbin, you go with the bobbin up to the top. Over here, you take your cotton, go around that one, around your bobbin, wind your bobbin. And when it's full, just wind it quickly. You will see it's full when it gets there. It's touching that, it will there, so it stops. Then all you do is you click it open, and there's a little knife so you can cut it off, and there's your bobbin. And you have just to wind it up your bobbin. And let's put it back in its place, and put that back in its place. So if you thread this needle again, let's just quickly do it. So you come from there, down, around that loop, around that one, through this hole, around this, that strut, width, I'm trying to do it with my glasses on with your needle and push it through. And that's it. Thank you for spending time with me. I appreciate it. And I'm going to make this live available on the channel. And if you want to go and see how to thread your industrial machine and work with it, this is how you do it. I'm just going to give you another demonstration with the industrial machine over here. And I'm going to show you how the pedal at the bottom works. So if you want to get your machine to work, you have to put it on at the wall and then you have to switch it on on the green button over there and you will hear the sound so it's busy putting power to the machine and then if I want to work I'm going to put the foot down. Oh, well, you're not going down now. That's strange. I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, put your foot down and then you're going to pedal on that. So you're going to push your what's that? Oh, that's a piece of another thing. So you're just going to put your foot down, you're going to start working. Oh, this foot is not down. Hmm, don't know why this is. Okay, I'll show you another time, but if you want to work with the industrial machine, you use that part. I need to just figure out why it's not coming down. I think it didn't connect properly when I pushed it back in here. Yeah, it sounds like something is loose. There we go. Okay, let's try again. Didn't connect properly. So you switch it on. You lift the foot, put it down. You're going to put your foot on that pedal down there. That pedal is connected with your sewing machine through this bar. So as soon as I step on that pedal, it actually releases the engine to start working. So I just put my foot down there, and I step down, and it goes. And that's it. The industrial sewing machine works like a charm, and it really works nicely because it pulls everything through very quickly. Be careful, it's very fast. I've actually once sewed through my finger on the side on this. Keep your fingers away from it. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks like it. Hi Adam, sorry, I just saw you you now. Uh, okay, uh, yes, Barnett is a cousin of the, oh, Nanette is the cousin of the Berninas and they work really well. I'm a Bernina fan and 
I prefer to work with them. <laughs> Thanks for visiting. I'll see you in the next one.